In middle school, about the seventh grade, I suppose, we learn that the specific heat capacity of a substance is the amount of heat needed to raise one gram of the substance by one degree Celsius. Water has a specific heat capacity of 4.18 joules per gram degree C. We have an equation, heat capacity is equal to Q over M times delta T. Don't confuse the C for heat capacity right here with the C for Celsius there. In this definition, heat, Q, is energy expressed in joules. Although it can be input, it is usually the quantity that gets calculated. We look up the heat capacity of a substance, C, in a reference table, and we measure changes in temperature, and we measure mass by weight, and thus we, get, and thus we calculate Q. In high school, maybe grade 10 or 11, you learn to use molar quantities and Kelvin temperatures. Often, heat capacity was expressed as the heat needed to raise one mole of a substance by one degree Celsius. And then it was called molar heat capacity. Since one mole of water is 18 grams, the molar heat capacity of water is 75.38 joules per mole Kelvin. And we have an almost identical equation that says the heat capacity molar is Q divided by moles times delta T, and now the units are joules per mole K. In college, we learn the first law of thermodynamics. Delta U is Q plus W, or Q minus PdV. Here, U is internal energy, minus PdV is the work term, with P for pressure and V for volume. If I rearrange the expression, I will get Q equals delta U plus P delta V. Now divide by delta T, and we get Q over delta T is delta U plus P delta V over delta T. But Q over delta T is the definition of heat capacity. So heat capacity, then, is Q over delta T, which is equal to delta U plus P delta V over delta T. Now consider constant volume, and we see that the PDV term goes away, leaving delta U over delta T, which I have rewritten with partial derivative notation. This is often considered to be a formal definition of heat capacity at constant volume. We can also write an expression for CP using the same definition of heat capacity. This can then be expressed as the sum of two terms which we will see in a minute is convenient. So we have heat capacity, it's delta U plus P delta V over delta T, that's our original definition, but now we're looking at constant pressure, and we've, ex we've separated the terms and put in the partial derivative notation so that it's delta U over delta T and P times delta V over delta T, all at constant pressure. This second term keeps track of the work done on the universe as the system expands. For the energy of an ideal gas, where K is Boltzmann's constant, we have 1 half mass times velocity squared is equal to 3 halves KT. This equation was derived in my video titled Derivation Kinetic Energy equals 3 halves NRT. I didn't explicitly call out Boltzmann's constant in that video, but once you know that Avogadro's number times Boltzmann constant is equal to the universal gas constant, R, then it's obvious enough. I put a link to that video in the notes. For Avogadro's number of particles, Na, we substitute 3 halves Na k delta t for delta u, and the delta t's cancel. Then we're left with heat capacity at constant volume is 3 halves Na, over, Na times K. Also for Cp, we have delta U over delta T at constant pressure. Plus the second term that you see here, which is pressure times, and that is delta V over delta T at constant pressure, where I have substituted the ideal gas law in terms of Boltzmann's constant for volume. So it's this term right here, which we've brought down and made the substitution with the ideal gas law. We previously showed that the first term, 
delta U, delta T, was equal to 3 halves NAK. And with a little inspection, the second term will have delta T over delta T in it, which cancels, as well as pressure that cancels, leaving NA times K. So what we end up with is that CP is 3 halves NA times K plus NA times K, which is 5 halves NA times K. Now if we subtract CP minus CV, we get the definition of the gas constant. CP minus CV is 5 halves NA times K minus 3 halves NA times K, which is equal to NA times K, which is Avogadro's number times the Boltzmann constant, which is the gas constant R. So now you've seen another way to derive CP minus CV. This one's quite a bit more sophisticated than the first. The link to the original video is also in the notes. If you, if you like these videos, please press subscribe. Thank you.